We have a, you know, last year was maybe kind of a frustrating year for you in terms of results, I guess. Uh, what, what did you take out of, uh, out of the stretch of fights that you had? Man, last year was crazy. I lost two fights. I lost a lot of family members. I lost a lot of things, so that's the past, right? The only thing I can think of now is just redemption, climbing back up to where I once was, back to the top. That's fantastic. You know, we're supposed to compete in November. I don't think we ever heard uh, what was going on. Does it, it, I hate to bring it up, but it sounds like you have lost. Did that have anything to do with it, or, or what happened in November? Yeah, I mean, despite everything, everybody's going through something. So November, what happened was I was still injured from my fight and then I had messed up my hand and knee and going into the, the weeks I'm like everything's feeling good and then I was walking and my leg locked up and it kept locking up my left knee so I didn't know what was going on and then I ain't gonna sit here and talk about nobody's fights but I've seen a couple of fights the heavyweights with Cyril Ghosn his knee Calvin Cater his knee and then there was another fight with his knee and it was like a sign or like, somebody telling me, like, bro, get that checked out. So I went and got it therapied and, like, checked out and made sure everything was good. They made me do some movements that the knee wouldn't usually adjust to to make sure I was good. And they were just like, it's probably a little tweaked. Just take your time with it and continue doing what you're doing. Nice. Was that a tough decision to make to kind of have to, you know, put the fighting on hold for a little while to heal up? Or did you know, like, no, this is not, this is not good? I mean, I guess there's the health thing, like, I seen something with the UFC before with Dana White last year. A fighter went into a fight injured, and they his coach knew he was injured or something, and they got in trouble for it. I don't want that outcome for my team. Yeah, fair enough. Well, the matchup stayed together. Did that matter to you at all? Did you care that the, the, the fight was rescheduled or, or not? Come on, man. The men in field fight was scheduled three times. So it was like... <laughs> I'm I'm good as long as I'm fighting I'm fine I don't I don't even care the opponent as you've seen I took two last minute short notice fights that's what I'm here for to fight I love it what do you think about the matchup itself is there anything stylistically that he presents that's challenging or anything enticing about the matchup itself well as you know you've been interviewing me since 2019 you know I don't research my opponents <laughs> so I don't know what he's bringing to the table I just know what I'm bringing to the table and. All I, I, again, I let my actions do the talking. Uh, you were talking about like not researching opponents. Is that just like a mental thing? Like uh, you don't want to know? Like has anybody ever said you should watch some tape, man? Or do you think it's just better not to focus on them? A lot of people they they tell me that oh, a real fighter watches their opponent, and study their opponent. I'm like, if a real fighter would study themselves, like if you see me watch a fight, I'm researching myself, see what things I did wrong so I can fix them. Because at the end of the day, a hybrid fighter, I call them hybrids now. They're not one-trick ponies like they used to be. We're hybrids with four, five, seven different styles of martial arts. One would assume that this person would come back fighting the same. That's not the case in today's day. Every fighter is looking to improve. And if I'm looking for something on their last fight, I'm sadly mistaken. So I let my coach do what he needs to do, and then he trains me accordingly. I love it. Makes sense. Last thing for me. You know, redemption tour, I guess, gets started on Saturday. I mean, what's what do you see for yourself? Like, what are the goals that you want to take care of this year? Man, I want to get, I want to fight at least three times. But I'm, I'm not going to sit here and hold you. I'm going to be truthful. Carlos Umberg, Adesanya's teammate, he beat he beat an opponent that, that I lost two years ago, which to me is still controversy to me because I felt like there was an early stoppage. I wasn't hurt or nothing. The second he beat this guy, he started running his mouth on Twitter. He tagged me in some shit. And to be realistic, that fight needs to happen. So after Saturday, I'm going to run through this guy. That's who I'm after. He ran his mouth, and he needs to put his money where his mouth is. I'm here for that fight. Because when I called him out, it, was, it wasn't, it was oh, it's June, it's this, it's this. Now he, he caught a little W, and now he want to run his mouth. I'm ready for it. Hey, William. Um... When are people in your Instagram comments going to stop uh, talking shit about your muscles and, and say you're not all natty? Like, like my coach said, man, all, good, all bad and good things don't mean it's bad and good. Like, you can't please everybody. And that's what I was in my head about a lot, a people pleaser. And once, once I let that go, the burden and weight on my shoulders just, whew, 
I feel like I could just do anything, and it's good or bad. If it's good, people are going to support you. If it's bad, you're doing something right because they're watching. What's your bench at right now? Do I have to tell you guys? Please. It's 4.55. I'm repping out 4.55. I'm not going to sit here and hold you. I'm not going to lie. You savage. 